This video covers the iBooks author widgets and using the layout tools. The book I'm going to give you an overview of is called Kids Love Bugs. It's the first self-published iBooks 2 file sold on iTunes and it's two dollars and ninety-nine cents. My name is Jeremy Kemp. I'm a lecturer at San Jose State's School of Library and Information Science. Okay, let's go ahead and open author and open up a sample iBook, Kids Love Bugs. In order to download the author tool, you need iTunes 10.5 and also uh, Mac OS Lion 10.7 in order to even work with the iBooks author. Uh, iBooks author, it comes in the App Store and it's free. Okay, so I have two basic options here when I'm starting a book. First off, I could start with a template, and here are the templates they offer, basic, contemporary. I'm using this craft format. So I chose the craft format, and then craft format comes with different uh, page uh, layouts. These are templates. Insert, I can do a chapter or preface. I can insert a section, copyright forward. I can insert uh, just a plain, plain old blank page. Another thing I can do here is insert a chapter from pages or a Word document. And the Word document formats come in pretty faithfully. It's nice. Now just to compare, I want to show you, I want to compare that top bar here in the iBooks author. Right back behind I've got a Keynote document open. And you can see a lot of the similar interface elements. In this case, Keynote up top allows you to add a slide, whereas Authors, uh, iBook Author, allows you to add sections and page types. You also have uh, the same controls, text box, shapes, tables, charts. Um, one new piece here for iBooks Author is Widget, which allows you to add any one of these uh, seven types of uh, interactive widgets. Another new thing here in the iBook side is the ability to preview the book on your iPad real time as well as to publish to a .iBooks format and eventually to the iTunes store. You have the same controls here on the top right, the inspector, uh, media, colors, and fonts. So you can see the basic interface between keynotes and authors, very similar. There's a cover page which has a background you can see and then uh, just some text fields here. You can change the font under Format, Show Fonts. This is very similar to uh, Keynote, Pages. Also, here, over here in the Inspector, I can change the alignment of the text, the color of the text. I can change the spacing. I can change the color fill of that box. I can change um, uh, Flip, Rotate. So lots of controls here. I can add uh, tables and columns. I can also add graphs and charts here and I can make a hyperlink to a web page. Okay, next up, let's take a look at the intro media. This is QuickTime file .m4v and in this case it's just a few seconds. Then I've got the table of contents page. This is the same throughout the book. In my case I've made sort of an awkward choice here and just left the individual pages by themselves. Take a look at this by uh, DK. You can see in this case, uh, cheated a little bit here and made a single chapter book, the first page being where they've marked start here. Okay, now that you've seen uh, basic layout of the book, the basic interface compared to the keynote, let's take a look at widgets. Seven different types. Probably the most common is going to be your gallery widget. So um, here's an example of a gallery widget where I just sweep my finger across and I can see multiple images. The next type is the media format and you can see here um, here's an example of media format here on the left with the chrysalis uh, hatching. The chrysalis comes with media controls. Next up interactive image. This is a standard widget in author. So here I have a JPEG format file and I can click on individual items and zoom in on them. You can see here um, I position this item and then position the view for that item when you click on it. So this is the final view for when you've clicked. Set the view, come back out to the full image. Let's take a look out, okay. So that's the full image. Now when I click on that individual uh, item, you can see it remembers the end position of the camera. So this is nice. It's, it's limited, but it allows you to zoom in on pieces. The next widget up is probably the most interesting, is the ability to import a Keynote interactive. So let me show you how to build a Keynote interactive very quickly uh, to include in the book. 
Okay, here we are in Keynote. What I have is 11 different views in uh, the interactive piece. Each one of these antennas cause, uh, each one of these little hotspots, if you click on them, cause a new image, the full image, to show up, including the highlighting on the individual uh, antenna. So the way this works is I've got uh, 11 images with identical controls, the, the set of uh, icons around the image, and you can see that the image in the middle changes. But overlaying each one of these individual uh, controls out here is a uh, hyperlink to slide number. So you can see in this case, if you click in the top left, this one right here, you get to slide number two. But if you click on the next one, you can see you go to slide number uh, two, sorry. And then the next one, slide number three. So in that way, uh, this is a, let me play this keynote illustration for you, and you get the same effect that you'll get on the iPad. You can hear the sound. Whenever I click on any one of these hotspots, I go to that individual slide. Okay, let's take a look behind this image. You can see that I've embedded a sound file. So that sound file is set up to show upon building in start audio. And that way, it's a very simple keynote animation, which allows you to move uh, between these 11 hotspots. The final thing you need to do here is to make sure that this slide presentation only works on hyperlinks. Click on the document settings and choose hyperlinks only. That's important. The only way to navigate this will be through the hyperlinks and the person won't be able to click through and see a sequential slideshow. Let's take a look at two that are uh, much more complicated and have maybe a lot more uh, potential. First off, the 3D image. So first thing I'm going to do is insert a page. Now I'm going to choose the widget, 3D widget, move it over here to the side, and you can see here it asks for a 3D file. Now, iBooks author requires a .dae, that's a Collada file format. First off, start up SketchUp, program from Google, and allows you to import uh, images or 3D objects from the 3D warehouse. So let me go to the models page and search for something like um, uh, ants. So uh, these are all 3D models that are available, not necessarily uh, free of license. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add this one right into the model. It's a 3D model and actually you can see it's 3D because I can zoom around it like this. I'm going to export as a 3D model in the format of Collada. That's a .dae file, okay, and I export it. I'm going to go back to Books and choose, you can see the ants.dae format and insert it. Okay, the next and most flexible widget is the dash code, HTML format widget. This allows you to place um, widgets in the same format as the Macintosh desktop widget. And you can see here, I'm going to go and find a dash code HTML. In this case, it will be in uh, the library on my hard drive under widgets. You're going to have to create these yourself. I've got a few here that will work kind of sort of. Most of these widgets won't work because they require uh, file access or internet access. I'm going to place a, a calculator widget here and change the layout for this guy so that he's all on his own. There you go. So on the left hand side we have a Collada 3D model. On the right hand side is a widget. Uh, those are created in an application called Dashcode here on uh, the Macintosh. So let's take a look at what these pieces look like on the iPad. So this is the set of books on my bookshelf. Some of these are the professional publishers, The Life on Earth, DK, Natural History, Insects. This is the book I want to take a look at, My Kids Love Bugs Book. So I'm going to open it up, see the cover. Dr. Ken's Kids Love Bugs. That's called the intro media file, and then it immediately jumps to chapter one. You can see here there's a chapter header page. Here's a book with multiple pages in the in the section in the chapter. So I'm going to open up the chapter header page, and this is a, an interactive widget, the gallery widget. 
Uh, all the widgets allow you to expand to full page. Here you can see a keynote animation with hotspots. So these are linked within the slideshow. So I'm going to start it up. So individual slides come with a sound when I uh, navigate through. So I'm going to go to the next page. This is another widget. Click on individual pieces within the photo and it zooms in. Finally, a video file, M4V file, in the page. So I'm going to shrink this page down. You can see the layout of the book here along the bottom. This has been Jeremy Kemp from San Jose State School of Library and Information Science. 